Hey, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Thank you so much for tuning into this video on stem and leaf plots. So this is another convenient way to display data. So let's look at the list of test scores on your screen. We're going to encounter the same problem we did at the end of my last video. So the problem is that there's only one score that's repeated, which is 74. Other than that, all the scores are different, but there's also a huge range of scores. So the range here is 100 minus 47, which is 53. We don't want to use a column graph or a dot plot because then we'd have to measure on the horizontal axis 47, 48, 49, all the way up to 100. It takes too long. So what we discussed at the end of my last video was that we could group the data. We could group it in 10s, put all the scores in the 40s together, all the scores in the 70s together, 80s together, and so on. And that's precisely what a stem and leaf plot does. In the last video, we used a grouped histogram. A stem and leaf plot is basically a grouped histogram on its side. So they always look like this. We have two columns, one for the stem and one for the leaf. So in this case, the stem is going to be the number of tens in a given score and the leaf the number of units. So we're going to group this in four, all the scores in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 100s. We don't skip any. So we still write the five here, for example, even though there were no scores above in the 50s. So how we write each score, so let's start with 47 we write it like this. So this means that it has four tens and seven units. So that's our key here. Usually we give a key. Four, seven represents a score of 47. Four tens, seven units. So there are no scores in the 50s. Let's go to the 60s. Well, there's one score, which is 68. In the 70s, there are three scores. So we write four for 74. There's another 74 and a 76. Again, in the leaf, we only write the number of units. So for the 80s, we have 88 and 83. For the 90s, we have 95 and 91. And for the 100, well, there's 10 tens, but no units. So we just put a zero there. So when you think you've done the stem and leaf plot, you should just double check that there's the same number of scores in your stem and leaf plot as there was in your original data. Both of them have 10, so I know I've done something right. So this stem and leaf plot is not quite correct because it needs to be ordered. So what we always have, we always have the smallest numbers closest to the stem and the largest numbers further away. So the 70s row is right, but the 80s is incorrect. I need to switch this around. So I have the smallest one, which is 83. That's the smallest score in the 80s first, then 88. And similarly, I need to switch it around for the 90 scores. I need to have one closest to the stem. So it should look like this, 91, 95. Now my stem and leaf plot is correct. So if you were to just sort of rotate it this way, it would look exactly like a grouped histogram. Stem and leaf plots display the data nice and convenient. This stem and leaf plot is so much easier to work with than just a list of random scores here. So we can get some key features and leaf plot. So we can see very clearly that the mode is 74. That's the only score that occurred more than once. We can see that the range is 100 minus 47, which is 53. Getting the median is even going to be easier because it's ordered. So there were 10 scores. So if I want to find the median, I want to find the middle of the fifth and sixth scores. So the middle occurs here between 76 and and 83 because there are five scores below, five scores above. Median is halfway between 76 and 83. So remember, if you don't know what's halfway between two numbers, you add them up and divide by two. And I get 79.5, that is the median. So it's not that easy to get the mean from this data. I'd still have to add up all the scores and divide by how many there are. But I got the mode, range, and median really easily. It also tells me about the distribution of scores. I can look at a stem and leaf plot and look, did most students score highly or did they score lowly? We can see from this that, yeah, most people did well on the test. That's what doing a stem and leaf plot does, just displays it in a convenient way. 
So now I'm going to give you a stem and leaf plot that's already done and we're going to answer some questions about it. So here I have a stem and leaf plot of the time to run 100 meters. So the key here is if I have 13, this is the number of whole seconds and this is the number of tenths of a second. So 13.2 means 13.2 seconds. So for example, this data point here, 10.9 would be 10.9 seconds. That would be someone really fast, like a Damian Kennedy. And down here, 15.1 would be 15.1 seconds. So someone considerably slower, like myself. So we're going to answer a few questions about this stem and leaf plot. So the first question I'm going to ask, what are possible values for A? You might have seen that here, there was just this random A here. So what are possible values that A could take? So remember, this has to be in order. So A has to be between 11.4 and 11.6. So A could be 5, it could also be 4 or 6. So they are the possibilities for A. It could be 4, 5 or 6. Okay, so now we're going to answer this question here. The range is 4.9, what is B? So B is this random score here. We know it's the highest score. It's the longest time to run 100 meters. So the range is 4.9. So let's say that the highest score is X because we don't know what it is exactly. So whatever that highest score is, when I subtract the lowest score, which is 10.9... I must get 4.9. Highest minus lowest is the range, which is 4.9. So you know how to solve equations like this. I can just add 10.9 to both sides, and I get that x, which is the highest score, is 4.9 plus 10.9, which is 15.8. So that means the highest score was 15.8. So the only way that this is possible is if this B here is equal to 8. So that score represents 15.8. So now we're asked the median time to run 100 metres. Now I still don't know what A is. I found what B is from some information given, but I still don't know whether this is 4, 5 or 6. So that would affect what the mean is, but it won't affect the median because the median only involves the middle score. So there are actually 19 scores in this stem and leaf plot. So the median will be like halfway there. It'll be the 10th score. So counting up, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The 10th largest and the 10th smallest score is this one here, 12.9 you can see that there are nine scores below it and nine scores above it. So the median is that score. So just make sure you're careful because a lot of people say, oh, the median's nine. It's not nine. This score represents 12.9. And so hopefully we can see from this that stem and leaf plots allow us to do some numerical analysis of the data a little easier. They're much easier to work with than just a random list of numbers. All right, thank you so much for tuning into this video. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a great day.